This is a revision video for GCSE Chemistry, looking at the four homologous series that are covered in triple science, but not in combined science. By the end of this video, you should be able to identify the functional groups of all four of these homologous series. You should be able to name the first four alkenes, alcohols and carboxylic acids, and also describe the chemical reactions of these groups. Within GCSE Organic Chemistry, we meet various different examples of homologous series, which are groups of compounds that have similar chemical properties because they have the same functional group and the same general formula. For combined science, you would have looked at alkanes and briefly alkenes, but for triple science, we need some additional information about alkenes and also some information about alcohols, carboxylic acids and esters. Alkanes and alkenes are both examples of hydrocarbons compounds that contain hydrogen and carbon atoms only. They differ in how those atoms are bonded. Carbon is able to make four bonds. In an alkane, each carbon atom makes bonds to four different atoms, and so it can be described as being saturated. In alkenes, this is not the case, and two of the carbon atoms are only bonded to three other atoms. To make up the fourth bond, they form a double covalent bond between the two carbon atoms. This situation, where each carbon atom is not forming bonds to the maximum number of atoms, is called being unsaturated. There are lots of different ways that a molecule can be unsaturated, including having triple bonds as well as double bonds. So alkenes are specifically hydrocarbons that contain a double bond. Let's make sure that that made sense and you're now happy identifying alkenes. For each of these four molecules, ask yourself, is it a hydrocarbon? Is it unsaturated? And if it is both of these things, is it an alkene? Pause the video and write down some answers now. The first molecule in the top left is not a hydrocarbon because it contains an atom of bromine. And we know that hydrocarbons are compounds only containing atoms of carbon and hydrogen. So since it's not a hydrocarbon, it can't be an alkene. The second molecule in the top right is a hydrocarbon because it only contains carbon and hydrogen atoms. However, each one of those carbon atoms is making bonds to the maximum number of other atoms. So this molecule is not unsaturated and therefore it can't be an alkene either. The third molecule in the bottom left is a hydrocarbon and it is unsaturated. However, alkenes only contain double bonds and this molecule contains a triple covalent bond. So it's not an alkene either. Our fourth and final molecule is a hydrocarbon it is unsaturated and it is an alkene. This is the alkene called ethene. If you're already confident drawing alkanes, then drawing alkenes is quite straightforward. We start off in the same way with a carbon-carbon chain. Then we're going to draw a double covalent bond between two of these carbon atoms. When you're drawing larger alkenes, it's important that you understand that the double bond is only between two of the carbon atoms, not the whole way along the chain. Then we need to fill in the hydrogens. Remember, each carbon atom can make four bonds in total. Here, both of our carbon atoms have already made two bonds, so they can make two more, and so we need to add two hydrogen atoms. Just like with alkanes, you need to be able to draw and name the first four alkenes. The only difference here is that rather than having carbon chains of between one and four carbons, as with the alkanes, for the alkenes, the carbon chain will be from two to five carbons. It's important that you remember that each one of these molecules will only contain one double bond. We've already met ethene, and so our second alkene will be propene. As you can see, there's one carbon-carbon double bond, and then the additional carbon only has a single bond adding it into the chain. It's not important for GCSE chemistry where you draw the double bond, as long as it's between two carbon atoms in the chain. Our third alkene is called butene. And again, you can see there's one carbon-carbon double bond, and then the other carbons are single bonded in. And every carbon atom is making four bonds in total. The fourth alkene contains five carbon atoms, and we haven't met the name for this yet because we didn't need it for alkanes. But this is the point where naming alkanes and alkenes and other molecules gets really straightforward because we start using the same prefixes that we use for shapes. So a five-sided shape is called a pentagon, and an alkene with five carbon atoms in is called pentene. 
By adding up the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms in each of these molecules, we can work out that the general formula for an alkene is CnH2n, and we can use this to work out the molecular formula of any alkene. For instance, if I asked you for the formula of an alkene containing 16 carbon atoms, then to work out the number of hydrogen atoms, you would just need to double it. So it would be C16H32. Alkenes are more reactive than alkanes, and we can differentiate between the two molecules using a reagent called bromine water. Bromine water undergoes a colour change in the presence of any unsaturated molecule. So since the only difference between alkanes and alkenes is their level of saturatedness, we can use bromine water to identify this. Before it reacts with any other chemical, bromine water is a transparent orange liquid. And since it doesn't react with alkanes, it remains both orange and transparent if we mix it with an alkane. However, as soon as it interacts with a molecule that contains a double or a triple bond, bromine water turns colourless. The reason for this is that the orange colour of the bromine water is brought about by the bromine-bromine bond. And after it's reacted with an unsaturated molecule, that bromine-bromine bond no longer exists, so we no longer see that orange colour. It's really important that you understand that the bromine water is turning from orange to colourless, and you don't say it's turning from orange to clear. Clear means transparent or see-through, and the orange bromine water is still transparent, so you won't get a mark in the exam if you say that it turns clear. You also need to know a little bit of information about the reaction of alkenes. Firstly, they're useful for making addition polymers, including a lot of important plastics like polythene and polypropene and polybutene. They can be converted back into alkanes by hydrogenation using a nickel catalyst. They also react with water with an acid catalyst at 300 degrees C and 60 atmospheric pressures in order to make alcohols. And finally, they can be burned as fuels to produce carbon dioxide and water, but they have a smoky flame, so they're less good as fuels than alkanes are. The next homologous series we need to look at are the alcohols, and the chemistry of this group is defined by their functional group, which is an oxygen atom covalently bonded to a hydrogen atom. The general formula for the alcohols is CnH2n plus 1, OH. And as with the other general formulas, we can use this to work out the symbol formula of any alcohol. For instance, if we knew we had 15 carbon atoms, then the formula would be C15H31OH. The first four alcohols are named in a similar way to the alkanes and alkenes. So we have methanol, ethanol, propanol and butanol. To draw each of these molecules, we start out in exactly the same way as we would with an alkane, but we replace one of the hydrogens with an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. So here we have methanol, ethanol, propanol, and butanol. As with the alkenes, we're only going to see the functional group once in each molecule, and the name of the molecule is going to be based on the longest carbon-carbon chain. In addition to being present in alcoholic beverages, Ethanol and other alcohols are useful as solvents and as fuels, and also as chemical feedstocks in industry. There are two main ways that you can produce ethanol. Firstly, you can allow yeast to ferment sugar. This requires an environment that is both wet and warm, but not hot, usually somewhere between about 25 and 35 degrees C. This produces ethanol quite cheaply and easily, but it's also very impure and needs to be purified. If you need very high-grade ethanol, a better idea is to hydrate ethene using steam. Alcohols dissolve in water to produce neutral solutions. You might expect them to make an alkaline solution because you're thinking about hydroxide ions, but this OH group isn't an ion, it isn't free to enter solution and raise the pH, it remains covalently bonded to the molecule. Alcohols also burn to produce carbon dioxide and water, and they react with sodium to release hydrogen, which you could test for with a squeaky pop test, although you'd need to be very, very careful because, of course, the alcohol is also highly flammable. Alcohols can be oxidised either by microbes or by chemical oxidising agents like potassium dichromate in order to make carboxylic acids. Here's an opportunity to see how much of that you remember. Pause the video and fill in the gaps now. Ethanol is an example of an alcohol. It's useful as a solvent and a fuel, and its functional group is OH. When it dissolves in water, it forms a neutral solution, so the pH is 7, and it reacts with sodium to release hydrogen gas. It can be formed by fermentation by yeast or by hydrating ethene using steam, and it can be oxidised to make a carboxylic acid, specifically ethanoic acid. These carboxylic acids are the fourth homologous series that you need to know about, and the first four are methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, and butanoic acid. 
their functional group is a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom and then single bonded to another oxygen atom that in turn is bonded to a hydrogen atom. If you're struggling to remember which way around the double bond and the single bond go, just bear in mind that oxygen always needs to make the same number of bonds. So double bond on the top and single bond on the bottom means that both oxygen atoms are making two bonds. Carboxylic acids dissolve in water to form weak acids. In other words, they don't fully ionise. This means that they have high pHs compared to strong acids of the same concentration. So if you have a one molar solution of hydrochloric acid and a one molar solution of ethanoic acid, the ethanoic acid will have a higher pH, although still below 7 because it is still an acid. Carboxylic acids react with carbonates to produce carbon dioxide gas bubbles, which you could test for with lime water, and they react with alcohols to make esters. Esters are sweet-smelling volatile substances, which means that they evaporate very easily, so they're often used as flavourings and as perfumes. Their functional group is a carbon atom double bonded to an oxygen atom and single bonded to another oxygen atom, which then in turn is bonded to another carbon atom. That sounds complicated, but it's shown here in red. They're made from a condensation reaction between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. A condensation reaction is a reaction where a small molecule is lost, in this instance, water. If you know the reactants that the ester was made from, then you can name it. You take the prefix of the alcohol, for instance, meth for methanol, and put "-ile", on the end, and then the prefix for the carboxylic acid, say, prop, for propanoic acid, and put "-O8", on the end. So the ester formed by the reaction of methanol with propanoic acid is methyl propanoate. In the condensation reaction that makes this ester, a water molecule is lost. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that useful. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe below. And if there are particular topics that you'd like me to cover, don't forget to let me know in the comments.